Before we get started with that, though, I'm just the frets just need a little bit of a polish, and I've got my, uh, my little fret eraser here, and I'm just slightly polishing these frets just to get them back to somewhat a mirror finish here with a thousand grit. Oh, that fretboard looks nice. Yeah, I think that got it nice and shiny. Well, I'm gonna run and see if I can find myself a screw for this, and once I've found that screw to put this back together correctly, I'll get you back and we'll talk about putting strings on this thing. Okay. Well, I can't find one, so we'll just have to put it back as is for now and then uh, of course we'll uh, we'll order one and get it in and get this this straightened out here one thing nice about this type of guitar you can loosen this up and pull this off get all the things out of the way you need your strings and stuff and go right back to work so uh, I need to figure out why or how I can get this thing to get down in there why in the world they didn't make it big enough Unless this T-top came out of something else. I doubt it though. I need to get it seated all the way down in there. Yeah, I think it's good. But you don't have any way of controlling it. That's the problem. I have no way of adjusting the height of the pickup this way. You know, half the problem is probably this the length of these screws. My goodness, I just realized they're way too long. That's probably what's happening, why well, it's getting stopped at least. Probably not that bad. If it becomes an issue, we'll do something about it. But I don't want to cut that right now. Okay, so, well, we tried to clean up the, uh, the screws the best we could. But uh, they're definitely cleaner than they were. And we'll just address each one uh, a little bit before we get started here, or as we're doing this. So, He's back in here. So how have you been doing? What was your summer like? Summer was way too short for me. It just seemed like it's it uh, was May, and I uh, did a little vacationing in May, associated with my job, really. And then all of a sudden, it's now. It's just like, what happened? I mean, where did where did summer go? It just what did you do this summer? Get out and do anything? Go see any concerts? Buy any good guitars, maybe? I did. I bought a, uh, a 59 uh, or 58 reissue custom shop. Gibson Custom Shop. What's the whole thing? Gibson Custom Shop. Uh, historic reissue VOS. That's it. Something like that's a mouthful, but that's. I think that's. Pretty much takes it into account. It's 2014. Got a one heck of a deal on it. I couldn't pass it up. And it, and it wasn't just that. One of the only guitars that I've played like that that uh, I fell in love with. I mean, immediately. It had to, I just couldn't live without it. I had to have it. And uh, I was able to, to sell my motorcycle and, uh, and get it, which was, was great. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put you in super fast mode because I just put the wrong screws in. And I'll be right back when I got a remedy. That was right. See you in a few. Alright. So I got these on here. And uh, I'm going to pause here for a second. And when I come back, we're going to get the strings on this sucker. Okay, I was uh, getting ready to, to do the strings and I got... Everything lined up up here and tightened up and such. And then I picked up the guitar and I noticed, because of course there's no screw in there, this thing is flopping around. So I got a piece of foam here and I'm going to try to get this fixed. So I thought I'd bring you back for that. So we just um, well, go back through this drill. So I'm going to super fast mode you until I get this thing off. So super fast mode, ho! Oh! 
Okay, it's not going to be that simple. Of course, nothing ever is. But we'll have a solution here, I'm sure. Just need to think about it. Since we don't have the right screw, we'll just have to come up with something here. So I was thinking that we put something under it, it would push it up, and then this would hold it down. But see how this just flops freely. So I'll need to not only have something under it, but I'll have to have something sitting here as well. So when it's pushed down, it'll hold and be tight, somewhat tight. So let's try this. See if that feels better. Yeah, that'll do it for now. Just until we get a screw. How about that? Super fast move. There we go, not going anywhere. Okay, so next on to the string. So I thought I'd check this neck and see how well the frets are and if they need dressed. But that's something I can't do. I don't have the tools for it. But just for the client, I just want to show them that there are some frets here. That's got a rock. It's a rock there. Rock there. Rock. Nice rock there with 10th fret. Nice rock. Good all the way down. Just a few problem frets. Okay, now it's time to put on these strings. We've got some of this we're going to put on here. Some guitar grease. Put that in the nut. So what I used for this is I found this. This was an extremely small soldering iron at one time, believe it or not, for SMT stuff. And it works very good for doing this kind of stuff because it's small enough to get it normally in the grooves. Get some of the product here and jam it in. A little goes a long way. You don't need a whole lot of it. This Tub will last you for probably a lifetime, I would say, unless you're working on a lot of guitars. So we talked about what you're doing this summer, what your winter plans, I wonder. What do you think about winter? It's not my favorite time. I like the fall. I don't care much about for the winter, though. So what's your plans, huh? All of a sudden, I felt like Mr. Rogers. All right, so I got that in there, and now I'm going to put the strings pretty through this. All right, so what we're doing here... It's a 46 to 9. It's almost like a, you know, a 10 gauge string set for the most part. Here's your normal standard 10 set goes 17, 13, 10. And of course, the one we're putting on goes uh, 16, 11, 9. If you can see that there. So a little lower on the bottom than I'm used to, but I'm not playing this guitar. And I found out that the uh, person it is, it sounds like has a very light touch. So we're going to try to get the lowest action as we can. There we go. Ideally, when you're changing strings and you're not doing all this linseed oil and stuff, you want to take them off one at a time so you can keep even tension across your neck. It's just better. This neck will take a little bit of time to set in. I'll have to do adjustments on it over time just to get it to be back to where it might have been before. And since we're taking it probably away from that, I'm going to have a lot of more adjustments. So I'll adjust it and set it. Let it set for a while. Come back, measure it, adjust it, and that could take a week. I think we're going to have to make some major changes by the way it played. So we'll see. All right. Brass red. I just learned about a neat trick. If you've ever done this wrap over like this, and uh, sometimes, depending on what guitar, I guess, when you do this turnaround here, I don't know if you can see this or not, some of the string that this sharp part here, well, this one's not very sharp at all, but I guess that part is, might pull through when you wrap around. And there is a little bit of it there, but I don't think in this case it's going to bother you. But if that does, what I saw it was a way to get around this or to help it was you take an, you, when you cut off your other strings you keep this ball in and you stick that ball in you kind of thread it through there and what will happen is when this pulls in there it'll give you that little bit more now i haven't tried this and my first thought is well if that that might tend to move a little bit and that's something you're trying to eliminate i mean I don't know if that would be as rock stable, but let me tell you, the person I heard this from was Joe Bonamassa's tech, and you know how much he bends and plays, so if it works for him, it should work for us. But anyway, you might wonder, why am I taking it through upside down, or backwards, or whatever? It's because I'm doing the wraparound. I'll talk a little bit more about that after I get this done, so back to super fast mode. Okay, we've got them all on here now. Should go silver to brass. Silver, purple, green, black, red, brass. Very good. Okay. Now, if you... Ah, my battery died. Okay, we're back in business here. What I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by my battery was some Gibsons, uh, some aftermarket, of course, uh, I think all Epiphones maybe, have Tonomatic. I forget the name of the company, but they have little um, Allen screws here, and you screw them to the post so this doesn't move. If you don't have that, you got to do this, especially when you're doing the wrap around here uh, because it just wants to fall out. I guess it doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay, so um, the reason why I do this style of bridge thing for Les Paul, at least in my plane, is I do a lot of bending, and this makes the strings feel slinkier to me. I don't know if it is just something in my imagination, I'm not sure, but they just feel easier to bend, and they, they just feel better, okay? That's all I can say. 
Another reason, oh, by the way, I put the uh, graphite grease here too. You, anywhere your string is touching, you want to put it. You can even put some Teflon uh, here if you wanted. Maybe uh, it is something to, to make it slicker. I mean, you could take any excess you have of this and just wipe it in there. But anyway, uh, also has to do with the angle. Okay, when you come out of the bridge on this side, your string comes up at a hard angle, right? Which is a good thing in, in most cases because you want a hard break angle here. Because that's where you, you want a good break angle here and you want a good break angle here at your nut. Now, sometimes, especially with older Les Pauls, these will start to collapse from the pressure. And that's a problem. And this helps alleviate that. And also, sometimes, the string will hit the back of your Nashville-style bridge before it gets to the saddle. And that's bad. That makes for a horrible tone. And it's just not good. So anyway, so we do it this way. So we control that angle and you can notice... It's it's a somewhat, oh, I mean, it's definitely not anywhere as steep as it would be coming out of here. And that might have something to do with the fill. But uh, Billy Gibbons does it. If it's good enough for Billy Gibbons, it's good enough for me. All right, so uh, I'm going to, uh, I've done another video in the past of, uh, of how I uh, string up a Telecaster style guitar. But how about we do one for the Fender? So hold on. <laughs> Take two. So how about we do one for the Gibson? Let's see.